It's that time of year again, the time for sappy Christmas movies on the Hallmark Channel. You might be asking, why aren't I in my computer room playing computer games? Well, as you can see, it ain't happening. But thanks to AMD Link, I have a loophole. All right, guys, let's talk about this AMD Link software, how it works, how to set it up, and so on and so forth. So once you have the app installed on your phone, you're going to have to do an add PC. And so you have to open up the Radeon settings, which as you can see, and let me just get that to refocus, I already have that opened up. So once you get that there, go to next. And so it's giving you a really good step-by-step -step instruction. So if we says here to press the AMD Link button in the Radeon settings, so if you just open up the Radeon settings, you're going to actually see it right here on the home page at the very bottom. Let me see if I can get that to focus in just a tad bit more. It's a little hard to do both of these at the same time. So yeah, all we're going to do here is we're going to click add a device. So now if I come back to my phone, let me get that to focus a little better. Come on. Yeah. There we go. So if we go next... And there we go. It tells you to click the add device, which we did. Now we're going to do the QR code thing. So once I find it, there we go. I have to raise my phone down. And so, yeah, once you scan that QR code, it adds the device. And so now I'm connected to my desktop. So if I close this and reopen it now, I'll come back to that original screen. There it is. Desktop connection. And so now I'm home. So if I go to like the games, it'll show me a list of the games that I have on my PC. So you can see that I got a few there. I added Destiny. We'll talk about that here in just a second. Um, here's where you can set up controllers, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. Otherwise, you just have the on-screen controller that's just touch controls. Um, come over a little bit more here. They've got galleries for doing things like screenshots and stuff. This little like text message icon thing is just a news feed to give you AMD news and stuff, which is pretty cool. Um, then you got a timeline thing to do where you can do some frame per second capturing and stuff, which is cool because, oops, and sometimes that's one bug I have noticed. Sometimes it'll just lose the service. And when that happens, I just have to close the app out, reopen it. It only happens when I'm messing with settings. I haven't had it once happen when I was gaming. But when I'm messing around with the settings and scrolling through stuff. So if I just go back here, well, it says it's unable to connect. Come back here, look at the AMD Radeon settings. And as you can see, this is circling. So there's another little bug on that driver. Sometimes those settings refresh themselves. The Radeon software makes you lose your connection. Yeah, there we go. So then, yeah, once you get past that, then you have your actual settings. And so you can choose whatever settings you want best for, like, the streaming capabilities. So um, you have your desktop there. You can keep the screen on so that it doesn't turn your phone off. And if we go here to the... Actually, there's a little more settings here on the gaming. And if we come here and, and come to this little settings thing, here's where we can adjust all of our settings. So we can choose what resolution we want. We can go to what kind of frame rate we want to try to play with on our phone. And we can also do bit rates. So the higher the bit rate, the better quality you can get, but it's going to depend on what kind of wireless network speed you have. So you're probably going to want a pretty high-end router to use very high. But, you know, that's things you'll have to test out. Um, you can actually test the stream. We'll do that here in just a second. Audio bit rate, if you want higher quality audio, which I do recommend because it sounds better. Now the frame skipping, we're going to adjust, we're going to play around with that more in a game. But I actually don't like the frame skipping, I turned that off. And then you can have the turn to PC display off, that means that as soon as this starts streaming, it'll turn your monitor off so you're not wasting power. If you test the stream and do a start test, it'll actually give you an idea of what percentage of frames you're dropping versus which, what you're keeping. So, as you can see, might have a little bit of a shoddy connection here, but then after a while it smoothed out and I had zero. So, not too bad. 
it says I have a good connection. So 82.6 megabits per second, I should be able to use the full bandwidth. All right, let's jump into a game and look at how it performs. Okay, so before we do an official game test, you're probably gonna want a pair of controller, and it works with a PS4 controller very well. If we're gonna do that though, we need to pair it by Bluetooth. So, the best thing to do, doggone it phone, you weren't supposed to lock out at me right then. If you go here into your Bluetooth settings, now of course some of them are, some of these settings are just a little bit easier, and I'm gonna try to keep this focused in as much as I can, but you know, this, this camera's a little bit wonky. Um, if we come over here and we look at our connected devices, we can pair a new device. So if you're going to do that, come to your PS4 controller first. And what we'll do, let me see if I can get this to focus in a little That's better. If you hold the PlayStation button with this share button. Okay, there we go. It's doing it. So you'll see here we're flashing. So that means we're trying to pair. Now if I go and I pair a new device, let me see if I can get this to focus in just a little bit more. It's going to look for available devices. And so any second now, I should see this PlayStation controller pop up. Now that said, uh, come on, you going to find this controller or not phone? So normally that's what happens. Now I did have this thing paired already. And so that might be why the phone's not finding it. In fact, I'm positive that's why it is. Because if I was able to look at my currently connected, there it is, wireless controller. So normally you would see the wireless controller and hit connect. Mine's already connected, we're good to go. All right, let's look at some gaming now. All right, so in the AMD Link software, if you come to this gaming tab, you can see your list of games. It's really only going to work with Steam games, so I wouldn't recommend the Destiny 2 just yet, but we will look at that here in a little bit. So if we come here, you can see in the background, it turned my monitor off, and bam, here we go. And look at this. I am playing Cat Quest. If you drag from the top, you can get to your options. So like, for instance, here, there it's showing me the controllers I can choose. So if I hit controller one, that is the... It's really hard to do from the back of a phone looking into a phone. So if I do the controller one, I can do those on-screen controls. So let me come back here and I'm going to do a continue. Bam. I'll try to keep this thing focused as best as I can, guys. I know it's a little pain when it's doing that. But yeah, there we go. I'm playing my kitty. And so I can use these touch controls pretty well. They're not great, but they're functional. And I can actually do damage and stuff. Woohoo, look at me go. But, if I want to get a little better control now, we're going to use this PlayStation controller, and this is going to make my life a lot easier too. So, oops, let's go here. I'm going to go to controller 2 now. And that is my PlayStation controller. So now you can see the on-screen control went... Okay, we're going to bring this down a little bit, and we're going to bring it in just a little bit closer. Bam. So when I have this with a PlayStation controller, this is really easy to run. As you can see, my settings are working pretty good. So if I want to go fly around, which I can do in this game because, you know, cats can fly. Let's see if I can get you a little better focus here. So, the question with this is, how well does this stream? This Lonely Cave is kind of a booger. Basically, these are really powerful things and those chests can one-shot you. And so, I can kill these things. I've got a powerful kitty here, and I've got a spell combination. But if I can't do this just right, I'm going to have problems. So, let's see if I can remember here what I'm doing. Oopsies, that was not what I wanted to do. Alrighty, so I think that's my big... Oh. Ah. Okay guys, I, I figured out what my problem was. I was looking at the recording of the game I was playing instead of just looking past my camera and looking at the game. So, if this doesn't have good latency, we're going to have problems taking out these three things, but...
and I forgot still to press that one key 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 button because I'm kind of a little out of practice my spell combo. But you can see, guys, the latency is so good that even with dangerous creatures, I'm not doing bad. I can go through them. I can get out of jail free and move pretty good. So that's pretty darn impressive on the AMD Link side of performance. Let's go ahead now and talk about Destiny 2. All right, guys, I just wanted to show you how close I think AMD Link is to playing any game off your PC. doesn't matter whether it's Steam or supported or not. So I've got Destiny 2 up here, and if you notice, I've got a keyboard to the side here and a mouse over here. And what I also have is, this is the USB-C adapter to normal USB that came with my Pixel 3. And so there's my little wireless receiver. Now, you'll see this black cursor on the screen. That's actually the Android cursor. And so there's the crosshairs are the actual part of the Destiny game, but if you look at this, Look at this. I'm playing Destiny. Now, unfortunately, if I zoom in, I can't aim. And so if I, you know, I, this isn't exactly playable. If I come over here and try to shoot something, I might get lucky. Ugh! Ugh! Whoa, oh boy. So, as you can see, I mean, I can't move very well, and I can't really play this game. But wow, I mean, look at this. If AMD could get their link to do more of a one-to-one -one motion when you plug a wireless receiver in for a USB mouse and keyboard, you can pretty much play any PC game. Just go into the desktop, start it up, and go. So, guys, this is kind of cool. Um, but, you know, maybe it's not as cool as all that. Maybe there's some other ramifications. We'll uh, go ahead and wrap this review up and guide and kind of give some impressions on it. So how is AMD Link doing? Well, really, it's just fantastic on, as far as the performance level is concerned. I mean, when I was playing Cat Quest, I was surprised that any kind of input lag or anything was barely noticeable and only when I was really trying to notice it. And that's fantastic. I would still say that I wouldn't use AMD Link to play a competitive online game because I feel like that's going to be putting yourself at too much of a disadvantage. But as far as just any normal, you know, even just a, a platform that requires some kind of difficult controls, you know, Cat Quest, there's some kind of key parts in that game where you better have some really great reaction times. And it did just fine. Destiny 2, I mean, obviously that didn't work. It's not meant to work, but we're really close. I feel like AMD could make that happen. So it's a really awesome service and it's something built into their drivers and it's free and you just need an AMD graphics card. That's like an amazing thing, right? But the question really comes into play is, is that, well, in order for AMD to link to work, I have to be connected to my home wireless network. I can't use it from outside of work, outside of my home. And I mean, it sounds nice, but really, guys, I mean, if I'm going to be home playing video games, I'm just going to play some video games on my computer. I don't want to play on my, I did, that's the whole point of having a PC and a 144 hertz monitor and a gaming PC is so that I can play on my PC not my phone. I mean, sure, if I have to, you know, if you can get away with playing while you're with your family, but at the same time, it's like, if you're with your family, shouldn't you be with your family, right? So how practical is it? it? To me, it just seems like such a niche idea that I can't see it being super overly useful, except if this is the first step, and AMD is going to find a way to take this to the next level where it can be an online streaming your gaming computer from home to your phone at, say, well, <laughs> not work. That would be a terrible idea. But, you know, at a store, at a friend's house or someplace we have a decent Internet connection. That would be really cool. PlayStation does that with their network. You can actually stream your game from your PS4 via the PlayStation network. I feel like AMD is at the first step of that. And if they keep going, if AMD Link keeps evolving in that direction, then it's going to be flat out amazing. 
Now, that said though, the performance metrics and monitoring that AMD Link offers with this new feature is pretty awesome too. I like the fact that I can monitor frame rates without having to have a frame rate display on my screen. Now I've got dual displays, so it's not as much of a deal anymore, but even then it's nice to know that I don't have to run anything else in the background. I can just play just my game and I can monitor frame rates through my phone as a separate device pretty awesome. So yeah, guys, there's the game streaming feature. That's all I really wanted to cover here. That was already a lot of details that I wanted to get into that. So let me know what you think of this video and let me know if there's some more things about AMD drivers or other software on, on a computer hardware level basis that you want me to cover. Be more than happy to do it if I think it's helping you guys out. And if it's going to keep bringing people to my channel, then why not? So I hope this video helps you guys out. Hope you guys get some good information. I'll catch you later.